dog on it. Mama says I'm old enough now and I gotta get out and find my own way of my own home. Me and my dog went a walking and the more we was walking, the more we see. Water so big it seemed it never gonna end. says the dog, I says, one day I'm gonna build us a boat. But first dog, we need a home. We walk for months and we walk for days seen some things trees like I never see no leaves some even grew to cross there's a whole world out there just like mama said now then here we are in the woods and we are trying to locate a cave that I used to camp in when I was a kid when I was about 13, 14 a couple of times and I've not camped in it since but I have been to it but it's locating it. It is somewhere up in this rock face and it's um, a hard one to find so I'm just going to have to have a scan around and just sort of see if I can locate it but this whole place is just an overgrown jungle so it's almost impossible just to navigate your way around this especially because it is slippy so we don't want to be sort of hurting ourselves so we have a fire to build i've got a rock pick on the back of my bag here which you might have already noticed and that's just going to allow me to chuck a bit of rubble around and any sort of rocks that i need to sort of move just to make a flat sort of bed surface um, because i can't exactly remember what it's going to be like in there and then um once we've got the fire lit, I'm going to uh, get out my Chinese infused meal, which is going to be some sort of pork, a bit of a Chinesey type sauce, noodles, a few vegetables, and we're going to cook it all on the fire. And I've got a really clever way of cooking it, which is uh, on these skewers that I found, and they're, they're really clever. I do like them, and I always have them in my bushcraft bag just because it's a simple way of cooking. So we just need to get up there, locate this cave and then we can uh, sort ourselves out get unpacked and try to find a place to sleep right come on then let's get on here blue come on behind come on well i found a cave but it's not the one i was uh, looking for but i've got the head torch on so let's just have a little bit of an explore get on blue go on he's not scared Get a light on. Yeah, so this one drops back quite a way. You can see some uh, dry leaves there, which is good. At least it's a dry place to be, but it's just not tall enough to actually lay down in, I wouldn't have said. Let's go have a look back here and see. Yeah, I wouldn't want to sleep in here. Not when you're having to crawl. Just to get into it. Yeah, bang in my head. Yeah, this is a bit of a creepy one to be honest. And there's quite a lot that's fallen down over the years, so... Yeah. It does seem quite a dangerous one to be in. It does go back quite a long way there, but I think what I'm going to do is let's go a little bit further. And then, yeah, there's no chance 
not a chance would I sleep in here. Nowhere. <laughs> Too scary. There we go. I think I've located it. I think this is it. And you cannot see it from back down there at all. Come on then, Blue, come on. Come on, lead the way, get on. I'll put dog out first in case there's any ghosts and ghouls in there. <laughs> Promise I'm not scared yet. Yeah, this is it. Just that little slither there. That's my cave for the night. Hey Blue, is it safe? Can we come in? Go on then, go check it out. No, no, go on, get on. Go on. If he's happy going in, then so am I. Oh, it's exciting as this. Let's just take this bag off, so what squeeze under there, put it on. And this is going to be home blue. Well, if we look up here, we've got this massive rock face, and this is straight above the cave. And this cave sits underneath that, and there's got to be a good 100,000 tons there, which can squash me in the night. Luckily, it's been here a good few hundred thousand years. Anyway, let's get in. Turn this light on. Fairly narrow opening. But once you're inside, it's actually pretty big in here. So there we go. This is it, Blue. This is home for the night, eh? Let's head through. It's actually better if you come further back because you can actually stand up properly. But if you can see these walls, obviously this is where they used to mine for a lot of stone. Still a couple of chocks in place just to hold up some of the slabs that potentially could fall down. You can see this crack here. You know, it's a, a grit stone here, which means that it's sort of done in layers, which means it comes off in layers as well. And you can see all these layers here. Just look all the way through that there. Whoa, goes back quite a long way though. Here's a perfect example of it. So this way you've got to be a little bit careful. There's a massive slab there that's come off and this is why they put those chocks in just to hold those up in position and if you can see there that's where it's fallen from so what they do is is chop that up now knock it about and take it out and if it's usable for building stone they'd use it if not they'd just dump it in a big slag heap but i'll tell you what it goes back a lot further down back there let's see if i can show you i'm not going any further than that though can go underneath as well but it's just a little bit too dangerous for me there so let's head back out and set ourselves up a little sleeping platform so when you take the torch off there there isn't much light in here. It's north facing and uh, it's getting to be sort of mid afternoon now. So there isn't much sort of sunshine or anything because it's cloudy as well. So definitely need to consider the light. And obviously that's going to help having a decent fire in here. So anyway, well, let's get ourselves set up and some sort of platform bed. We're going to have to make out of all this. Time to make a bed then. So the, today I have brought with me a heavyweight piece of kit. 
look at that, it is a rock pick. So one end we've got more of a sort of trowel shape and then the other's a spike just for sort of levering up any rocks or anything. But this is definitely something you would never carry for bushcraft unless you were doing something stupid like this. And uh, it's perfect really for in here because obviously with this end you can actually dig quite a lot. It's just like a decent shovel really. So I am gonna dig out a section here and just try and make just a flat enough bit to sleep on, that's all. So, first of all, let's get stuck in. a bit of this off because this is going to be potentially falling on my head at night so chunks like that definitely want to be out of the way Let's smooth this off a little bit So I've got myself a bit of a flat pad and I've just found this nice clean flat rock. So what I want to do is set this as a backrest. So if I've got my pad down here, I can sit on the pad and then just have a backrest just to lean against. So I've cleared a space here. I'll just lean that back and hopefully it'll just give me a bit more comfort. Hey Blue, there's a good boy. Well, I've got a cheap sort of tap to put down first because I've got a sleeping mat, but with all these rocks being sort of fairly sharp, it wouldn't take much to puncture that. So I'm just going to put this down first and then pump the mat up on top of it. Let's have a lay down and see what happens. Oh, look at that. It's a dream bed. And if I look forward that way, then I can see the uh, weird animal things. You know, them things that are blind, that live underground. The descent, that's the film, is it? <laughs> so at least I'll be able to see them coming, which is a good thing. <sighs> I'm not scared. I'm not scared. <laughs> I've just brought a cheap mat. It's the uh, Trichology UL80. Um, just because I don't want to puncture one of my nice ones. And this, because it is just cheap and cheerful. It'll keep me off the ground, keep me dry. And uh, to be fair, it's actually pretty comfortable, this one. So perfect for something like this. It's time to blow it up now. So I've mat blown up, just sit this back a bit, and here's my backrest. <laughs> hey, look at that, eh? Oh. <sighs> Living the dream in a cave. I keep checking that way just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Next job then is to make a fire pit. Currently I've got all my sort of kit just sprawled here at the end of my mattress and some kit just laid about all over there. So what I need to do is make a fire pit and then make some shelves around it just to put sort of some of the items like the kettle, cooking equipment and things like that. Because um, there's plenty of stone in here so I should be able to build and make almost like a, a little house, little kitchen and all that. So yeah, quite exciting. Hey. 
There's a good boy. I'll soon get that for you, lit for your dog. Nice and snug. <laughs> Go on then. Whew. Well, that took some digging and messing about. Chucked a few rocks around and uh, now the light is fading, so I need to get outside, make sure I can find some decent wood to burn and a way of starting the fire. <laughs> I don't even, I'm just thinking, I don't even think I've got any uh, method of starting the fire. I'm sure I will do my bag somewhere, but that could be interesting. Otherwise, it's going to be a very dark, miserable night in here. Anyway, I'll just turn the torch on and show you what I've done. So if you can see, I've got a backrest there, and then I've put this stone in place so I can actually have a place to sit against next to the fire. And then all this here, you can see like a fireplace there. So I've got this big wide area here just to sort of actually light a fire in. This is containing the fire completely. And then I've got these flat stones around here just to sort of put pans and pots on and what have you. And I'll put two up there as well, which will just do the same thing. So I can spread my kit out now and then make it into a little home. Well, it's nice to get out again, just to straighten my back out after just being arched over and lifting all them rocks and what have you. I've got my uh, tool belt on, so I've got my axe here, knife and my saw. So just in case of having a scan around and seeing if there's any dead wood that I can use to get a fire lit. Well, at least I've uh, found some birch, so that's a good start. There's literally nothing dead in this wood, or in this area of this wood, purely because everything wants to survive. It's just all growing strong. There's bits that have actually snapped, big uh, trees that have sort of snapped off, but they're growing now like um, you would have a uh, laid hedge. So it's just like still growing strong. So yeah, I'm going to have to go further afield to find some decent wood more to drag about and not much time to do it in well i found this uh, long piece here still attached but it is completely dead now the problem is if you just shove this over potentially it's going to flick up and smack you so you've got to be really careful so i'm going to do a, a little cut at the bottom and just uh, make it fall in a place that i want it to fall Well, gathering that wood was pretty hard work. Yeah, I think uh, going back to caveman times and lighting fires then, gathering wood and living in a cave all winter would be hard work. I've only done an hour and I'm knackered. <laughs> so I'm sort of ready now to light a fire. I've got a ferro rod, which I found in my bag, luckily. Um, I've also got my little... Um, like bag, like a draw bag that I made, and in here I've just got a few um, ignitables, a couple of natural, a couple unnatural. So maybe I'll just show you a couple of those. Um, I uh, gathered holly; it's always my favourite for lighting fires, um, and some silver birch bark. So uh, hopefully we should just get a spark going um, into a beautiful fire. Oh, I've also got some hol uh, holly, some bracken. But it's been raining for the last sort of week, so it's a little damp, but bracken does take quite well. So let's have a go and see if we can get this lit.
nice when it lights first time no messing about and straight away it just brightens up this miserable winter's day and also brightens up this cave thing is though the smoke from here is sort of traveling into the cave so it's currently sort of filling it up a little bit so I've got to be a little bit careful because I don't want to be breathing any in too much smoke really just purely because I'm a runner and I like my lungs they work very well for me. Look at that though, blissful. So just having a bit of a nightmare with this fire. I'm going to use a bit of a magic trick. So I'll just get my knife out. And then this is a piece of inner tube. So I'm just going to chop a little piece of this off. And I know it's not great to burn rubber. But when you can't light a fire and you're desperate, I need food. Um, I am going to just try ignite a little bit of this. I've still got a tiny little spark in here, but it's really struggling to go. Everything's so wet. Oh, I can't break that. So, let's just have a go with this inner tube. If I can just get this to light, what happens is with this, it just stays lit for a long time. So at least you've got that flame to just try build around. So if you can see that, that will slowly burn now and hopefully just give me enough to keep this going. There she goes straight away. Aha, fire. Come on, little fire. Come on. Come on, my little darling. You can do it. Well, we've got it going now. So, I'll show you what else is in this little pouch that I made. This is a bit of um, pigskin leather. Uh, I just made one of those simple drawer pouches, punch some holes in into a round piece, dead easy. So yeah, I always just have that little bit of bike inner tube, just as a just in case, and that worked quite well. So in here as well, what have I got? I've already got some nice dry silver birch. I've also got, you can see that, that's just some sort of that cotton stuff that you get on that grows on the moors I can't remember what it's called but that takes a spark quite well so it just gives you that instant ignition this stuff it doesn't burn for long but if you've got some uh, bracken or something else just to add to it straight away like straight away there that just gave enough just to start on some silver birch but yeah, not a bad way, natural way of lighting a fire, I guess. I've also got in here like a big sort of chunk of that tinder fungus, whatever they call it. So that will take a spark quite easily. Let's see if we can light it. And then it just stays a spark for a long, long time. Pretty much until it burns out, which will be days and days.
So if you can just see there, I'll be a bit bright that, we have got a spark in there and that literally will just keep going. Yeah, it never sets a light, it just sits there as a little ember and it's just great because you can transport your fire long distances just using a piece of this. So if you needed to keep that spark rather than having to restart it every time, then as I say, you can wrap that up, keep that in your bag and you could travel all day pretty much and this will still be a light ready to start your next fire on the next night. Clever stuff. Natural's always best, eh? <laughs> he says, after lighting a fire with uh, <laughs> some inner tube. Oh <laughs> uh, dear. Well, I've got the fire on, that's the main thing. And now, I'm going to open a beer, I think. I feel I deserve it. It's been quite hard work slogging about these wet woods. And now, I am cave dwelling. Let's get myself sorted. <coughs> oh, that smoke. So, first job, I have got a can of Brewdog Triple Hazy. It's a triple IPA, I think. <coughs> that smoke. Yep, and it is strong, 9.5%. Let's try this one. Yeah, it's gonna get giddy with this one, isn't it? Oh, wow, that is incredible. That is a, such a good beer. Mm. Spot on. So, that's beer sorted. Next thing I'll show you, since it's getting cold, I'm going to take my hat off and I'm going to show you the hat I made. So, look at this. This is my rabbit skin hat, and I have made many a man jealous of this thing. I made it out of three rabbit skins, which my dad cured himself. Um, so it's a little bit stiffer than probably what you, if you bought something from the shop, it's just treated that many times, it's just really soft. Um, but I prefer the rugged side of this one. But all hand stitched myself, I don't know if you can see that. And um, I made it out of three, which is quite hard to do. Most people will use four or five to make one with different uh, cuts out of the skin. I was quite clever and I tried to make it like a helmet. So it wraps right down over my ears and then round the back here. So it keeps you very warm. So there we go, chilling out. Beer in my rabbit, rabbit skin hat by a fire. Can't beat that, can you? You just can't beat it. So that's my little tiny Wetterling Zax. And this one, I've made a sheath for this actually. Let me show you. So here's my little tool belt. And uh, the sheath I've made for this, it's clever because it can sit on your belt upside down or the right way up. If I just get this off here and I'll show you. So there it is, it just hooks in. And then I've just done it with a little strap that comes around and just holds it in place so it's absolutely solid in it like that now the good thing about this is the belt loop here i've made it so it sits that way up on your belt and because it's only a tiny one it doesn't bother you at all and obviously on a belt loop you can slide it around your back just get it out of the way bring it around to the side um but all you do is a little clip and flick it out like that and then back in again um, it took some working out to make that it is it's clever i've not seen anyone else do one that's an upright one um, and it would only work on a tiny axe 
But the same thing, I can actually have it that way around as well. So it does work both ways, but I prefer just having it on my left hand side and it's just ready to go there. And I might need it tonight with all these ghouls that are living down that end and gonna come out and get me when I'm sleeping. Um, I'll show you as well. So that is uh, another knife that I've made. It's just a piece of old leather that I found just to make it with um, the sheath. And I just beeswax all the stitching in and everything like that, polish all the edge up. Uh, it's got a little belt loop, nothing too fancy. Um, but it's quite nice because it's solid and it clicks in. And this is the uh, other knife that I made. Um, so this is, it's, I think it's mahogany or something, I can't remember. But um, let's just see if you can see that. White liners. It's quite nicely made, is this one actually. I've not put a lanyard on it actually yet, but um, it's ready to take one. A couple of brass pins. And uh, again, it's that Nesmuk sort of style one that I prefer. I've uh, made, I made a couple of these ones, and then I've got plenty of others that I made as well, but it's really, really nice knife, is that. Clean, simple, no messing about, does the job. So, clip that away. What else? Oh yeah, this is leather work on that again. That's what I've... Uh, just made out of an old saddle, that's just for my Laplander saw. So there you go, that's all you really need when you're out and about. That saw though, it only does limited work. You need a bigger one, one of those big silky saws or something. They always come in a lot handier when you're doing a, especially when you're gathering wood for a fire, because then you can chop and process quite a lot of timber quite quickly. Whereas that's just a bit too small. I'm starting to get some hot embers going now, so I just thought I'd best have a think about doing some cooking. So, these are skewers for doing kebabs. That's all it is. They're quite clever, really. Just a piece of wire, and then you've got like a loop on one end. And the other end, we've got two spikes. I've got a rubber tip on at the minute. So I'll take that off and that just allows you to feed your meat on and whatever you're going to put on this skewer. So I'm going to get these sort of prepped up, ready to go and uh, make some beautiful kebabs. Second beer. Oh, let's have a taste of this one. That's not too bad either. Not as nice as that uh, triple hazy. Right, let's get on with some food then. So I have got a hoisin and garlic sauce. So I'm gonna sort of use this as a bit of a marinade. Um, so if I just chop this off, a corner of that, and I'm gonna put this into my titanium plate. And if I get it all in there, and then what I'm gonna do from there is just dip the meat that I've got, which is some pork shoulder, into this and then put it onto the skewers. There we go. And then anything remaining, I'm gonna cook the noodles in that sauce, so then I'll get like a, a proper um, hoisin and garlic uh, noodle and pork Chinesey type food thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bright foodie, aren't I? So, first job, I've got a couple of these uh, beautiful pork shoulder steaks. So I'm just going to get them out and chop them into just chunks. But, I mean, that is just, look at that. So much beautiful meat on there. So I'll just slice this steak section into chunks that will just go nicely onto those skewers. Look how sharp my knife is. It's just like butter through there. I do like having a decent knife though. Look at that. Wow, these are some chunky bits. Let's chop these up as well. Some nice little uh, layers of fat through that, which will be quite nice just to 
allow the fire to do its thing to that. But there we go, some nice chunky steak bits. And then next, what I'll do is, let's just dip these in here. Give them a little bit of a coating, almost like a marinade really, but obviously marinade normally you'd sit it in for a longer period of time. Let's have a look at what we're going to put on these skewers then. So I have several mushrooms and they're just like the perfect size just to pierce through and pop on that skewer. I've got a tomato. In fact, I've got a couple of tomatoes. Green pepper. What else is in my magic bag? Shallots again. I do like my shallots. They do taste good once on the, they're cooked on a fire. Then look at that baby. Let's get that sweet pepper on there. I think I've got a slight leak in my bag of some oil, which isn't good. But this is the point of putting it in a plastic bag, so then at least it's not going all over my rucksack. And then I've got some noodles just to put in this uh, sauce at the end. They don't take a minute or two, really. It's just straight to wok or whatever you call it. So there we go, that is it. Let's uh, clean my fingers a second. I'll pick my knife up and then chop some of this veg up, eh? Hey, this is it. This is real living. Love this game. Just love it. Right. So I've got my skewers. Let's make some kebabs. Just slide that on. It's quite an easy system really. Very easy to do. And it's going to be a really good way of cooking over a fire. I've used it a few times actually and I mean look at that. Just slips on. Perfect. On to the next. The problem is when you're doing skewers like this though that you always find that the veg cooks really quickly. And then you end up with the meat not cooked as much. Or you burn the veg to make it work. Look at that shallot. Let's get that on. What else? Some big sweet peppers. Pop that on. Right, I think that <laughs> is plenty on that one. Try not get it in the whoa in the soil or anything. Just drop that. On to the next. Start with a pepper. Sorry. <laughs> Mushroom. I've had a drink, leave me alone. I'll get a state of my hands as well. So we'll just feed all this on. Just look at this though, it's just beautiful. Such a nice cooking method. Just ramming this over a fire. I think that'll do. So that is kebab number two. A lot of shallot. Love it. Right, let's work out how to get these to actually sit over the fire now. I can't turn the camera off. <laughs> I can't turn the camera off. Oh, clean one finger. So now, a way of trying to cook these kebabs. So I've got a loop on one end. So what I figure is, I've just got a bit of green wood here. If I chop this off here, and then that one loop can go around that one, one loop can go around there. But then I need to pull it from that point over to something else. And then at the other end, I've got a spike. Now ideally, I'd probably have like a hole that I could just put that spike into, 
uh, to pull it taut, but I've got no way of making a hole. So luckily, look what I found. I have got a magic piece of wood here. So if you can see that, if I just pull that together with my hand, if you look, and then the, the gap opens up here, and that tiny little gap is enough to put those spikes through and then let go and it clamps onto it. Get that. This is what bushcrafts are about. You think of a problem or you have a problem and then you have to find a solution for it. But I mean, that is a natural vice that's going to just clamp that at the other end and hopefully hold it taut. Right, let's try and get these kebabs on. Hook on one side. And hopefully I've got it the right length. So just sit through this magic clamp I've made. Let's see if it works. It does work, but it's a little bit low. So what I might need to do is, is just manhandle this and then allow it to cook a little bit slower rather than burning it all. Right, yeah, it's going to be a bit awkward as this, but let's get the other one on. And then once I've got them both on, I can at least mess about with them a little bit by hand. But I'll tell you what, look at this. Can you see? You can't see. You can't see that, can you? So open that up. Pop it through. <laughs> and it clamps on. It's absolutely brilliant. Brilliant, I say. Right. Let's allow them to cook a little bit. Whilst I've been sat here, I've noticed that there's been uh, more drips coming from this uh, ceiling. And I just wonder, I was thinking about the science behind it of why it feels that there's more coming through. And I was wondering whether it is uh, like a capillary action. So as I'm adding heat to this, it's almost like drying out the surface, which then is pulling more through. Um, I don't know. One of you science geeks can let me know. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Is it capillary action? It's drawing out more water. That's my guess anyway, being a semi-scientist. Well, they are cooking away steadily. <laughs> I think that's the word for it. Just steady away. I keep sort of like rotating the uh, bits on there and just moving the stick around a little bit. I've got this here. I've sort of wedged it in with this V stick here so I can move this around however I want to really um, and also the individual bits I can move around as well and that just allows it just to sit there hopefully and then I can open my final beer which is Peeling good. I was going to have this for pudding. It's like a chocolate orange. This was going to be my pudding, but needs must. Let's get a beer down me. <laughs> Pure chocolate orange, that. One of my favourite things, and you've got to have that at Christmas, don't you? Chocolate orange in your stocking. <sighs> yeah. I'm warm though, it's um, it's meant to get down to freezing tonight and I've got to say, with my rabbit skin hat on, sat by a fire, in a cave, it's, it's honestly like being in a sauna. I'm ready to strip really, to be honest. It's um, unbelievable how well it's holding the temperature in here. Yeah, 
it'll drop cold though once the fire goes out I reckon and obviously that's when I need to get to sleep so it might be a different night of an overall but um, I do have a decent sleeping bag with me I've got my Rab one um, so in that completely fine um, pretty much in any weather in the UK well it is slowly cooking and getting there it's um, a bit awkward to do on these skewers but um, on a bigger fire it would probably be a lot easier and obviously if I had time just to set up properly and make it work better then uh, it would be fine but um, it's it's working it is working um, at least it is smoked so I guess it'll be jerky <laughs> which is fine but um, yeah it'd be right I'll just turn the lights off and then just chew away it don't matter if it was raw it'd be right it does not matter well a quick chat about future of what I'm uh, on with with this channel um, I've loved it. I've loved every second of what I've done so far. It has cost me a lot of money and it has cost me a lot of time. And I've lost out on quite a bit of work, I would say, just because I've been trying to sort of promote and push this sort of channel. But um, it's just, yeah, it, it has been fantastic. And there's so many highs with it. But there's a lot of lows that you've got to deal with. It's, it's hard work. It really is hard work. And I don't think people appreciate how hard it is. Um, or just understand what goes into it. I mean, every single video that I make, you know, there's all this filming and messing about, but it's the editing. I mean, the minimum editing time I've done on one video is seven hours. Um, the maximum, which was my sort of like year compilation was uh I, I said it was about um 20 hours but realistically it was more than that it was more than 20 hours and that is just sat there looking at a screen and sorting out um as i say all the editing just making sure that everything's like spot on as good as i can make um with the capabilities that i've got presently um so i'm trying my best just to improve and progress i would say but um Anyway, what I'm going to do with the channel is I think I'm going to go down the line of doing a Patreon um, where I can actually sort of start maybe making a little bit of money from this um, almost to pay back what I'm doing so far but also just to make sure that I can keep going and progress um, and and just keep making videos. I, you know, I'm really enjoying doing what I'm doing so um, it's just something that I'm I'm intrigued in and I'm involved to the point where I sort of feel that I'm passing on good information, a good positive vibe and just, you know, helping people out. And I get that from all you guys who are just sort of like sending me the messages and, you know, making me understand that uh, I am actually making a difference to a lot of people out there, which is good. So, um, yeah, Patreon is the next thing. So I am going to set it up so that I have a lot to give, I think, in the Patreon. Um, it's one thing just being on YouTube and anyone can just have that for free. But, you know, I'm going to make it that it's going to sort of help me out, be able to sort of pay for being a YouTuber, <laughs> which is the weirdest thing to say ever. But, um, you know, I want it to... I want it to pay I do I really do and uh, obviously what I want to do is is build a strong close community of um, uh, Patreon sort of like users who ha have the chance to sort of be part of that community you know like um, I'm going to set up a, a Facebook group I can't stand Facebook it doesn't matter him but I'm going to set up a Facebook group uh, where people can sort of chat and sort of spend time just asking questions and hopefully it'll be a positive thing because from my side all I'm about is positivity so I just want people to join the Patreon who are positive and want to help other people or be helped and just keep that positive vibe going that's all um, so yeah Facebook group I'm going to uh, I've got merch coming out soon I'll probably do some specialised merch for the Patreon lot as well. Um, I'll do a... I think I'll probably 
maybe do like a uh, what am I talking about naming a hat so if I do a naming a hat then um, you know what I'll do is I'll probably just sort of give away a few bits as well um, hopefully I'll get some discount codes as well from a few companies I've got plenty of companies contacting me already which is good um, it's just a case of you know working out the gubbins regarding that um, what else I don't know I'll just try and make it so it's it's a nice place to be you know being part of that patreon being part of my world and what i'm on with but um just giving that community sort of spirit and just you know helping you out and obviously it's helping me out and yeah i don't know i'm just thinking i'm just trying to get these things rolling and see what happens with it all really it's unsustainable as it is that's what i'm going to say it's unsustainable you can't be a youtuber and think that you're going to get paid money for it because you really don't it's just it's hard work it really is and you the money benefit isn't enough so i almost forgot i've got this uh sauce in this pan here so nice and simply i'm going to open these noodles up drop them in the pan Give them a shake around. And then all I'm going to do, just add that to the heat. Ow, it's burnt myself. And then we can cook some noodles off as well. I'm going to take off these kebabs now and see what is edible and what isn't. Do one at a time, eh? I tell you what, this uh, clamp system on this uh, piece of wood that I found is just brilliant. I mean, to take that home, I think. Look at that! That is it. Look at that. So, if I just uh, can hold it in one hand, stop it rolling off. I'm going to just pick away at this. All right, let's have a go and see what I can pick off here. Got to start with some meat. Tear a bit of that off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Look at that. It tears off. Mmm. Wow. It literally does not matter what you cook on the fire. It just tastes amazing. Definitely. I mean here just some green pepper. So good. Mm. I've got to be careful I don't lose my tooth on this one. <laughs> so, if I can uh, find my spork. Let's try these noodles with it. So this got a bit of that sauce in with it. Really good. <clears throat> Plain noodles. Quite a simple meal, really. Meat, veg, and a bit of noodles, but um, cooked over the fire like that, just, <laughs> just fantastic. It really is. There's no other word for it. Just fantastic.
right, let's have a look down here. See how smoky it gets. Dear. Yeah, this whole cave now is just full of smoke. Not very good for me to breathe in, so hopefully I'm gonna get rid of the fire and just let it sort of dissipate before I go to sleep. And luckily I'm sleeping low level, so at least I'm under the smoke line. But it's dropping cold. I really feel the cold air in this tunnel now. Let's get back to this fire. Well, I finished my beers, so I'm bored. So I have got the catapult out. So, some ammunition in here. Just flick these open. Some nice fat ball bearings here. And then hopefully, I can uh, fire these down this cavern and uh, gather them back up again. So, I'll set a can up down at the bottom there and I'm going to aim for that. Love a bit of catapult game. Well, I don't know if you can see that can down there, but that is my aim. My target. That's what it is, my target. So, let's see if I can hit it. Ready? miles off to be fair it's about 15 meters away is that can so it's quite a tricky one to hit gone come on this time this time i have it i have it Oh, that was like just beneath it. Oh, that was so close. I'm hoping I'll be able to gather these back up again. I know one went flying down that cabin then. I missed that. Oh, like an inch away. Damn it an inch away again and I'm always an inch low that's three that's hit the same point damn it inch too high so close so close right last one this is it if I don't get it it's bedtime you ready for this this is when the heat is on and I've got to make sure that I can't retire a loser. You ready? Frig me, that was so close. Well, I just went back to retrieve the uh, shots that I took and I found two, four, six, seven out of about, I think, only nine shots. And it's just because these things are just so shiny, they just uh, stand out perfectly well. So I've moved the can a bit closer to give myself a bit more of a chance and I'm gonna have another go. So, let's see what happens now. Gotta hit it, come on. I'll eat it. Oh, that was close. Line it up. 
Oh, again, so close. Life or death situation. Oh, come on. <laughs> Whoa, that came back and nearly hit me. Last one. This is it. It's all on this one. It is all on this one. Take your time. Punch it. Well, although I didn't hit it, I need to show you how close I was. Look at this. Look at this. I'll come down here and just look how close I was. So the can sat there. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six of them out of seven were that close. So I'm not that bad. <laughs> it could be a lot worse. So from that as well, I need to aim two inches higher and that is it. So yeah, let's have one more go. Oh look, there's one. I'm two missing now. Two missing. Right, I'm gonna to have to have another go. Two inches higher, let's get it. Let's get it. Come on then, come on. Let's have it. Two inches higher. Oh, there we go. I'd like to say first time, but. Hey, old mate, hey. You're a good lad, aren't you? He's just been uh, sat in the entrance, just guarding, guarding me, I guess. Haven't you, Blue, hey? You're yeah, a good lad. Looking after me. And I'll look after you. Anyway, I am the Cave Catapult Champion. Nobody can beat me here, because I'm <laughs> only one here, that's all. Um, but anyway, that went down quite well. So I just thought I'd show you as well my neck knife um this is a very rare extremely rare neck knife there are i think 12 of these in circulation so that's how rare they are uh that's worldwide um so these are made by my mate who is uh firecraft uk if you want to sort of check him out on instagram um you might be able to see some of his sort of like uh his lifestyle choices, um, just being a bit of a homesteader and um, obviously, he, you know, he makes a few knives and stuff as well. But these are just top quality. So if I just show you that, a little bit of leather work there. Simple little clip. Pull that off. Then inside, we've got the most amazing knife ever, which is the spark, which he calls it. And you can tell why. It is just tiny. So simply etched by his logo there this one has got green liners and this is in like an ancient bog wood and it's a tiny little blade scandy grind on it look at that shining through it fits in two fingers i put my uh, special noose lanyard on so you can sort of lock your last finger on there Anyway, mate of mine and 12 in circulation, super rare. And there is a possibility that you guys might be able to own one of these purely because he's my mate and I've said to him, can you make me 10? And he was like, yep, I can sort you 10 out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a Bushman and Blue one. Um, and I'm going to probably make it available to Patreon members um, when i get that set up in a few weeks time i think um, if you'd like to buy one of these knives then uh, yeah check me out on patreon and um, you will have an opportunity to buy one that they, they are pretty awesome and obviously i'm going to have my um, logo etched on it as well um, as well as the firecraft logo which is pretty cool as well and if you want to own a super rare knife by a fantastic knife maker then check this out. Well, there we go. The fire is dying down. The smoke is slowly dissipating from this cave. And uh, I'm going to get myself ready for bed. Um, 
I'm not bothered about that side. That's the entrance to the normal world. It's it's that side there. You're just like thinking like what the hell is going to come out of the ground and just try to uh, gobble me up. Luckily, I have got the gorgeous Blue who is just chilling out as my little guard dog on his mat. So he's completely happy. Um, I've got some pretty good kit out with me tonight, but I've got to say I've made a bad choice here. This is the... Um, oh, I don't even know what it is. It's cheap and cheerful. It's pretty comfy to sleep on. I've slept on it quite a lot of times, but the last few times it has started going down and tonight it's really gone down so already if you can see that it's not going to be very comfortable is it so um yeah a bit of a pain really because i'm going to be waking up in the night and then having to blow that back up ah yeah sometimes you've just got to be a bit careful with kit because Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And tonight, it doesn't. <laughs> so I am going to just, yeah, it's just going to run them nights. Anyway, it has been a pleasure. I've had some fantastic food, had a beer or two, waffled on loads of rubbish, and I'm just going to get myself ready for bed and enjoy the fairy lights. So we will see you in the morning for another fantastic day on this beautiful planet that we live on <sighs> right time to lay this log we'll see you in the morning well about two hours in and i've woke up really cold just trying to sort of fight off that cold temperature and one of the main reasons is is the fact that this uh, mat is just not designed for cold winter sleeping the R value of it's like really low so it's just it's, not, it's just not for it and uh, also the fact that it's gone down so I blew it up just before I got into bed and then um, two hours later my hip is just completely and my leg just completely touching the ground and obviously, just through that um, conduction, it's just taking the heat away from my body. So, I'm just going to have to inflate this again. And just have one of those nights where it's just <laughs> not very comfortable, I would say. But yeah, it's really cold. And it just shows you that, you know, when it comes to these uh, winter camps, that you definitely need to have the right kit with you. And this mat. It just doesn't do the job, it really doesn't. Morning flowers. Well, it was just cold, that's all I can say. A very chilly night, and that's due to this mat not being uh, good enough. Um, and obviously the fact that it's sort of gone down a little bit, which uh, made me be able to touch the ground at times, and I'd wake up very cold because of it. Uh, Blue is just sort of sat up there, you can't see him at the minute, but he's just um, standing guard on this grey day. And that's what he does, as soon as we set up camp, he generally sort of sits himself in a position where he can sort of see um, everything going on. And then if anybody or anything, any animal sort of comes nearby, he'll just growl just to let me know that something's around. So yeah, pretty good really, um, as a guard dog. But as I said, it's like it's one thing guarding me that way, but it's it's this side I think I need the guardian from. The dark abyss, because that way you just cannot see anything. Just goes off into nothing. Ah oh dear. Anyway, it was nice uh, sleeping in the cave, caveman style, with a rabbit skin hat on, which to be fair, without this, I'd have been freezing last night. It traps the heat in so well, it's amazing really. But it's time to get this kit packed away and get ourselves back down home. It's not far for me, this is a very local one. As I say, we used to play in here as kids and all these woods. 
There's Blue, look at him up there. Hey Blue, good boy. So there we go, the secret cave camp. Not the most comfortable night I've ever had, I've got to say. But nonetheless, um, it's just amazing just to get outside and just embrace nature, lighting a fire, living like a caveman, cooking on that fire. And that food last night was just divine. It really was. Anyway, I'm going to get myself back home and make a cup of tea and have some breakfast. Um, if you've liked the video, just give it one of these and uh, I've got loads of up and coming things which um, are quite exciting really. I've been working hard on it but first thing I'm going to have the Patreon set up. Uh, so what I'm doing is, is working out a way of making sure that you guys who contribute towards the Patreon um, get something decent in return. So I'm trying my best just to uh, fathom that. Um, I've also got merch coming out merch get that that's just a weird thing isn't it but um yeah i've got uh some pretty cool designs there and it's going to be better than the usual stuff that you uh would normally come across it's really cool honestly so that's uh exciting too but uh anyway in the meantime if you want to contribute towards the channel by buy me a beer or blue a chew then uh, there is a buy me a coffee link in the description below I'll also pin a message in the message board as well uh, which, with the link on. So if you'd just like to help me out, that would be greatly appreciated. What do you say, Blue? You ready to go? <laughs> He's always ready. Right then, we will see you another time. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, just take care of yourselves out there and get out. Make sure you get yourselves out. That's what it's all about. Take care.